Well, Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks for the briefing. Let's take, let's, here's an example then for, the, for that. Uh, it has to do with Cameroon. In Cameroon, there's a, there's a report out today by Amnesty International that up to 500 prisoners since these Anglophone protests have taken place are locked up like sardines. People were shot in the foot. Some people were thrown out of a helicopter. So this is all, I, I, I guess I would refer you to this Amnesty International report as a, as a complaint. And I guess maybe give me, give as an example, how quickly then the UN is talking about sending a, a political advisor, Mr. Fall, there, but how, how would it go about if you, if you see allegations such as are detailed today by Amnesty International about an ongoing situation of torture in a country that the UN has said that it's p providing good offices to, what do you do next? Um, when I would react when Amnesty International, for example, contacts my office to do that. Um, uh, obviously, public sources can raise concern, and I can then also contact the government and, and ask them for further information on that. The problem simply is, and I have to be very honest about this, I, I have two staff members, and I have to cover the whole globe. So when an organization that is as professional and, and systematic as Amnesty International comes out with a very uh, well-based and consolidated report, um, there is little added value I can have in making an immediate intervention. The, the, it's out in, 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 the, in the public sphere, and states can pick, and other stakeholders can pick up that information and act upon that. If I feel I can have an added value, by requesting to do a country visit and uh, with a reali realistic prospect that that will be accepted, I, I will do so. But again, I have the budget to do two country visits per year. My priorities will always be to visit countries that SPT cannot visit um, because these are not parties to the convention. My priority will be uh, to, to raise cases that no one is aware of. So if something is very prominent in the public sphere, I will tend not to address it on top of everything else if other cases are there that need to be addressed that no one is aware of. So that shows a bit of the, the, the reality of, of my work. Right. These people are still locked up at like sardines. The report just came out today. So I'm just raising, I, I raise that to you as a... And, and absolutely, I, it's not to say that, it, the question is just if, if I intervened immediately, would that change anything? Or, it's, it's, it's resources that I have to try to apply there where I can actually change something or where, uh, where, where I feel my, my, my added voice will have an effect. And uh, obviously ab abuse of the type that you're mentioning is always um, horrifying. And there is much more going on of this in the world that we can possibly be aware of. And I just want to take this opportunity to point out that my, my next report in, to the Human Rights Council in spring will be on migration-related torture. And there we have millions of people that are completely marginalized and don't have access to criminal justice system. No one even knows that they're who they are. They're not registered. They can disappear with impunity. And they do disappear with impunity. And before they disappear, lots of horrible things happen to them. And that's not confined to a specific region. I've done regional consultations around the world, and it is everywhere. What happens to irregular migrants is a, a topic that I feel I have to take up and you know, put the spotlight on because not that no, no one else is doing it, but in terms of the torture and the ill-treatment aspect, these are people that others don't have access to because their mandates are specifically designed to address a prison system or ICRC armed conflict or something like that. So just to, yeah. One last, just one last follow-up on the thing that you just raised. Have you spoken with EU countries that fund the, the, the stopping of migration in Libya, for example, to ensure that their funding isn't used for the type of detention you're describing? That is a huge issue for me. I have uh, done a press release together with the Special Rapporteur on the Right of Migrants uh, um, uh, protesting against the agreements that the EU has made with some of the armed groups in, in Libya. And uh, I uh, intend to take that up in the future uh, more intensely because that, that is a, a very uh, controversial issue. Okay, we've got uh, oh, three more questions and then we'll have to wrap up. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, to come again. Thing, thing. Uh, I'm Evelyn Leopold and let me welcome you, which I didn't do earlier, on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association. Um, I, um, 
I don't want to belabor Rwanda, but I'm. Uh, which says that, uh, that uh, hundreds of people are detained without charge, packed like sardines, paying bails, people shot in the legs so they can't protest, people fleeing the hospital to avoid the authorities. <coughs> So they obviously got in, were able to gather this evidence, and they've called for other international organizations to send people. Has the UN sent anyone? And if not, why not? Um, we have, uh, as you know, we have a presence in uh, in Cameroon. We've seen uh, the the Amnesty report, which raises a lot of issues of great concern to us. Um, and I should have, hopefully, have a bit more for you. Later, including on the <clears throat> on the fall visit. Yes, if all well, when I have something on the fall visit, I will share it with you. 